Hey family, we are back for another Bible study, okay? So, growing up, I felt like I never had a voice, okay? I never felt like I had anyone that was willing to stand up for me. And this week, um, they had this, um program I guess for domestic violence and we went and watched the Vanessa Gillian I apologize if I'm saying her name wrong um documentary um she was a soldier in the army who was sexually assaulted and then brutally murdered and just to watch how hard her family fought for her. It was it was a horrible, horrible situation, but you know, her family didn't give up. They kept fighting. They kept telling her story. They kept sharing her story until they got justice, until they got answers. And you know, I want to try harder for God. I I let my fear of communications, you know, because I don't feel like I'm that good at communicating, at you know, explaining things. So I let my fear, you know, of my insecurities come in between, you know, standing up for God, being a voice for God. And after watching that movie, I realized I want to do better. I want to fight harder for him. I want to give more to what he has called me to do, okay? Um, I know it's not going to just happen overnight that I'm just going to be the best, but I'm just going to, you know, try my best to continuously try to work hard to, you know, perfect <laughs> my craft, my communication skills so that, you know, his people can get to the full extent because, that is the purpose of all of this, is to help God's people to guide his people, you know, back to him, get everybody on the right track. <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. You know, and even though I've never had somebody to support and be there for me, like, that lady in that movie, um, God has been there for me. And, you know, he hasn't abandoned me. He's been there for me emotionally, making sure I get, you know, I have healthy, I have a healthy brain, okay? Because when you don't have this health in check, he can ruin everything else, okay? So he making sure he's there for me emotionally, you know. He's been providing for me financially. God has just been fighting for me. Fighting for me to get where he need me to be so that I can be saved from my own destructive ways, okay? Because... I'm in the situation that I'm in because of me. But because I, you know, I apologized for my ways. And I showed him that I was serious about wanting to change. He, ooh, sorry, you guys. He has decided to help me. Help me dig myself out of a hole that I put myself in. That's love. That's real love, okay? 
So, from this day on, I'm not going to no longer be afraid to be a voice for God, okay? And to stick up for my father and to, you know, continue to spread the truth, okay? No matter what people might think or feel about what I got to say, the truth is not always pretty and the truth don't always feel good. But when you have the truth, you are able to grow, okay? And we all just need to grow and so we can be in a better space. You know, when you grow, when you get in a better space, you become more happier. You might think you happy now, but then when you get where God really want to be, you realize you was never really happy. You realize that. It's like being in a bad relationship and then you get with somebody that really love you and then you be like, all those years I thought I was happy, but I wasn't. And now I know what real happiness feels like, okay? <clears throat> so, you know, it's not about me. All it is is about God and his people and we all being on the same track. You know, whoever wants the information, I'm not here to force anybody to love God, to want to follow his rules. It's if you want to do it, okay? Because I've learned when you try to force people to do things your way, it only pushes them away even more. So it's whoever wants this information. I'm just trying to help, you know, whoever wants to help, okay? So today we are discussing love and obey the Lord. Okay, love and obey the Lord. In order to love and obey someone's love, okay, you have to know their love language. You have to first know that person and their boundaries. That is the only way you can really in a, love somebody, okay? Because if you love somebody in a way that they don't feel, you know, makes them happy, then you're not loving them right. No matter how much you try... It, they they would never be happy. They'll never be satisfied because you're not doing what makes them happy, okay? So, the only way for us to love God correctly is to do it the way that he told us to, okay? And his first rule of his love language is to know who he is. There's so many voices out here, so many men, men, middlemans, okay? So many fake gods out here, so many voices. How can you know what is his voice from all the other voices? And the only way to do that is to get to know him. A child know their mother's voice from anybody in the world. You know why? Because they spent nine months in their body. So they are so in tune with their mother. They just they just know them. They know how their heartbeat sounds. They know everything. And that's how we should be with God. We should be so in tune with him. That we know everything about him. And like. We know his voice. From all these other voices. That nobody can trick us. Nobody can deceive us. Because we just know God. That well. And by us learning his love language. Okay. Learning and his boundaries, we are showing God that we really love him. 
because that's how you show somebody you really love them when you take the time to really know what makes them happy y'all remember that song i want to know what makes you cry so I joke so i can be on that emotion. that's what god is asking for us he's like i want i want you to want to know me so that you can make me happy. Because that's what Joe was saying in that song. He wanted to know everything about his woman. So that he know how to make her happy. How to keep her happy. They say we're supposed to make ourselves happy. But how to, I guess, add to her happiness. Okay. <laughs> so that is. God's love language, and that is what he's asking for us. So like I said, God's first command is to get to know him, to know our father, okay? And since none of us have ever seen God, nobody has ever seen God, okay? It says not even the angels can look upon God's face, okay? It's because he's just so glorious, okay? So all we have is characteristics, okay? So characteristics that we know of God is that he's a protector. Okay? He protected he protected Abraham in the fire. He protected him at birth. He protected Joseph from his brothers. He protected Moses from being killed at birth. And He's just a protector, okay? He's a provider. He provided for Moses and the Israel. When they was in the wilderness, he provided for Moses and the Israelites, okay? He's a promise keeper. He fulfilled his promise to Abraham through um, Joshua, okay? He's patient. Okay, and he's fair. He sent Noah to preach to his people for a hundred and what, 20 years, 130 years. That's patient. That's fairness. He's like, I don't have to destroy you guys. I'm going to give you a chance to get it together. But if you keep refusing then, you know, this is what's going to happen. So it's like, that's, that's fair. That's, <laughs> can't nobody say that wasn't fair. He gave them a long time, 130 years. That's a long time to try to get it together. It wasn't like he said, you got a week to get it together. Oh, I'm destroying everything. He gave them 130 years. That's a long time. You, can, you can't say that's not fair. <laughs> so God is patient. He's fair. His word never voids. Okay. He's a teacher. He's a redeemer. When the enemy stole everything from Job, he gave it all back to him. He's a redeemer. And he never forsakes. God said he never forsakes, but it's people that forsakes him, okay? So God will never leave you to be destroyed. If you get destroyed, it's because you was out here following another God and not him, okay? When you follow God's laws and commands, it's a guide or a step to learn where to start, okay? Because some... Sometimes it can be hard. You'd be like, how can I start this relationship? Like, you know, I've never done this before. I don't know how to start talking to God. I don't know how to form a relationship with him, okay? But the laws and the commands is the first step. You get to know him. 
You get to know his ways, his flaws, what make him happy, what make him angry, what keeps you safe, what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. He tells you everything, like literally break everything down for you so you can know just the basics. And that's just the basics. Okay, so last week we went over the Ten Commandments and broke down which each one of them meant, okay? And, you know, so there could be clarity on what exactly God was asking from us, okay? And that was to respect him, to respect the creator and know that he he's the one that should get all the praise for everything. Because he is the creator of everything, okay? So nobody should get his praise but him, okay? So respect him, to respect ourselves, and to respect the people around us. Like, that's all God is asking for us, is just to respect everybody. Like, everybody don't have to, you know, do it exactly the same, okay? Everybody don't have to love God, and that's okay. But for the ones that do, he has rules and commands for you to follow because you're chosen okay you're his people so you you're a representative of him so you have to you can't do you know things that other people are doing i know it could be like for some people it could feel like that you have to try to be perfect right I heard somebody said that one time. It's like because they was working for a certain organization, when they went out and they had their shirt on, they felt like they had to be perfect all the time because people recognized the shirt. And that's what that's what it can feel like sometimes, you know, following God. It's like because you're a representative of God, you have to try to be perfect all the time but if you really look at the stories none of his prophets were perfect they all made mistakes they all made mistakes they all fell short okay but it's about the heart nobody's perfect but it's about the heart are you trying are you trying to do what's right are you trying to help really help people sometimes we make a mistake but god look at the heart he don't look at your mistakes okay Whew. so this week we will be covering his commands or his mitzvahs okay and we are going to start with food okay because as they say you are what you eat you think you your thinking is only as clear as the food that you're putting in your body, okay? And when you eat the wrong stuff, it weighs your body down. It makes you tired. It clogs your mind from being able to think. So we will be going over Deuteronomy 14, okay? Because that is where God tells us exactly what we should and shouldn't be putting in our bodies, okay? Okay, so we in Deuteronomy 14. And it says, you are the children of the Lord, your God. Do not cut yourself or shave the front of your heads for the dead. For you are a people holy to the Lord, your God. Out of all the people of the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasure possession. Do not eat any detestable thing. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roe deer, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope, and the mount sheep. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. However, of those that chew the cud or that have a divided hoof 
You may not eat the camel, the rabbit, or the hyrax. Although they chew the cud, they do not have a divided hoof. They are ceremonially unclean and ceremonially unclean for you. The pig is also unclean, although it has a divided hoof. It does not chew the cud. You are not to eat their meat or to touch their carcasses. Okay, so these animals that God are telling you not to eat, they're, the food that they eat is either unhealthy or they just consume a lot of food that shouldn't go into your body. So that's why God is telling you not to eat it because he's trying to protect you on the inside and the out okay so if an animal is eating something that could be poisonous or deadly to your body he's telling you ahead of time don't eat that animal because that animal has the tendency to eat the type of food that could be damaging to your body okay of all the creatures living in the water you may eat any that has fins and scales but anything that does not have fins and scales, you may not eat, for it is unclean. You may eat any clean bird, but these you may not eat. The eagle vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, the black kite, any kind of falcon, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the cormorant, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects are unclean to you. Do not eat them. But any winged creature that is clean you may eat. Do not eat anything you find already dead. You also are not supposed to consume blood okay you're not supposed to drink any blood god says you're supposed to let it drain on the ground like water okay and you make sure you cook all your food until you know the blood is fully gone of the body you should not eat any food where it still has blood in it, okay? Because life is in the blood, okay? Uh, but any winged creature that is clean, you may eat. Do not eat anything you find already dead. So he is requesting that you eat fresh food all the time. If you're going to eat these animals, eat it fresh. Like, you you kill it and then eat it <laughs> if it's already dead in the store you should not eat it okay you may give it to the foreigner residing in any of your own your towns and they may eat it or you may sell it to any other foreigner but you are a people holy to the lord your god do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk Okay, so they got the animals here sectioned off um, so you can know what you can and can't eat, okay? So for like the flying birds that you can eat, you can eat like chicken, doves, ducks, goose, um, swans, teal, turkeys. I, I bet you I was waiting to see can you hear can I eat turkey, right? Because Thanksgiving coming up. <laughs> turkey, sparrows, etc. Okay. Those are the clean birds that you can eat, okay? Then, you know, on the other side they got the kind that you can't eat, like, you know, ostrich and owls and hawks and okay. And then we got the insects neck. The only insects that you can eat are grasshoppers, crickets, and locusts, okay? If it's not those three, you're not supposed to eat it. It's unclean, okay? Okay. And then, 
we have the land animals that you can eat like goat jamaicans love them some goat and i love when they cook the goat it'd be so good okay <laughs> goat deer i i personally don't like the way deer taste tastes very weird but some people like it okay uh gazelle you know antelopes cattle um giraffes i ain't never had giraffe before i feel like that'd be a weird taste <laughs> but you can eat it okay and moose ox okay and then for the water animals okay when it comes to the fish i just went to the unclean side because it's a lot that you can't eat but it's not that much that you can't eat okay so for the fish no bullhead fish, no catfish. I know that sucks because a lot of us love catfish. It be banging, I know, but we can't have it, okay? Eel, marlin, paddlefish is a little bit more um, that you can't have, okay? No shellfish at all. I know lobster, crab, it be banging, but you're not supposed to have it. No shrimp. It's okay. I recently found out I'm allergic to shrimp, so you know that helps me not eat it. <laughs> okay, and then you got the soft body fish like jellyfish, octopus, squid. Okay, stuff like that. Not supposed to have it. Okay, and then you got the sea mammals, dolphins, otters, seals, walrus, whales. You're not supposed to have eat those either. Okay. Um. So I have been a vegetarian for four years i had to do it because of me being sick and eating meat was really just not settling with me and you know i was just like throwing up every day past now stomach was hurting like it was making all my symptoms worse so i just had to give up the meat okay but for some people you know it's not that life threatening like with me and so they feel like um I just can't give up meat I just can't give up this I can't give up bacon blah 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 but it's like God is not telling you not to eat these certain meats because he don't want you to enjoy you know food because he wants you to be healthy these certain animals that he's telling you not to eat they're like poisonous to your body it's like you putting poison inside of your own body and he's trying to god is always trying to save us from ourselves okay we feel like he sometimes it can feel like punishment and sometimes it can feel like exclusion but He's always trying to save us and protect us from ourselves and other people that want to hurt us, okay? And just eating certain animals, you know, it's not good for our bodies. Our body is not meant to digest and take in those certain animals, okay? So if you're saying you love loving God and you're following Him and you can't do things as far as... um sacrifice certain things not to indulge in certain things how can you say you really love god a lot of us do the fast in the beginning of the year like right but what's the purpose of doing that fast when you can't be disciplined enough to not eat only the like, he's not saying you can't eat meat, but just not the ones that's unclean. And to, you know, prepare your food fresh. And, you know, nowadays, I feel like you want, you, you want to kill the, you want to kill the goat and the cow and all of that yourself. Because <laughs> they putting all this stuff in the food. You putting steroids, they putting all this stuff in the food that's making you sick all to make a profit it's so crazy how this world is willing to make another person sick in order to gain a profit okay and it's and it's not just with food these doctors okay is you being cursed by certain teachings 
if you're following like if you follow God said if you follow somebody that practice witchcraft and stuff like that you're being cursed if you follow somebody that teach you to follow a God other than him you're being cursed so it's like and people don't care because they can be doing something, living their life a whole total different thing, and they teaching you what they feel like would make you happy instead of what would actually make your life better. Have you not noticed a majority of these celebrities, when they start getting real big and famous, they start going vegan? It's discipline discipline success is through discipline and i know it's hard because i'll be working on i'll be working on my discipline myself over here okay because getting out that bed <laughs> at five o'clock every morning is hard it'd be warm it'd be calling my name it'd be saying just hit the snooze for another 30 minutes but if you really want something if you really care about something, you'll be willing to make the sacrifices. You'll be willing to do what it takes in order to obtain it, okay? So, thank you, family, for joining me today for this Bible study of, you know, we just learning God, learning what makes him happy. Because he laid it all out for us in detail. God is very detailed, okay? That's another thing about him. He's very detailed and clear about what he wants and what he don't want, okay? So there's no gray areas. There's no confusion. When God first wrote the Bible, or he, he didn't write the Bible, but when he commanded man to write it, okay, he made sure for him to write it clear so that everybody can understand it. But along, you know, translations, people messing with the Bible, things of that nature, things got complicated, things got taken out, added, screwed up, rearranged, and now everybody's confused, okay? But God is trying to get us back to, back to the basics, okay? Back to where we supposed to be okay because sometimes god he he let things happen just to see just to test people just to see how people are willing to go to make sure you know they can do stuff without him like hovering over them it's like a boss okay when your boss, he give you an assignment, right? And then he he leads for you to complete the assignment, right? And then every now and then he'll come around, make sure you complete the assignment. Okay, that's the same thing with God. He tell you what it is, what the assignment is. And then he go and do whatever else he be doing because he God, okay? And then every now and then he come back and be like, okay, is everybody still focused? <laughs> is everybody still doing what I told him to do, or, or is it chaos up in here? And most of the time, it'd be chaos. It'd be chaos, because it seemed like we need God to just hover over us to make sure we just stay on point. <laughs> but we got to we gotta get it back. We got to get it together, family, because he is coming. God is coming. And when he comes, you want to be prepared. You don't want to be trying to get prepared last minute. I know. I spent my whole life doing that, and it sucks. Trying to do stuff last minute. Because you always forget something, and you're never ready. Okay? So it's better to start getting prepared now. I love you, family. I'll see y'all next week.